Hey guys, been a while. Um, so I've been busy, been working on my own game and stuff, which you can see in the background, something I've been working on. Um, and while I was doing it, I was like, man, I've really been off, you know, putting off YouTube and got to thinking, okay, well, what I, what videos do I want to make? And well, I'm sitting here thinking that all this while building something in Unreal and didn't even think, oh, hey, why not show how to build something like what I'm building? So, give you guys an idea. So one of the first things you see, we got a coin up there we can't get to, but if we wall jump, bam, we can grab that guy, run all the way down. We have something that keeps us from being able to glance off of, off of these and go around. Uh, the side that's all that's done in the code you can also just make sure that you put the correct exact correct path so that you can't get off the path but and then we have some like i said the wall jumping here's a nice little thing making sure that the player knows how to do the wall jumping before progressing to next level and then you notice the level, you see the city in the background, it's all nice and pretty. Uh, Joe wants to get there. So, jump down, and you'll see everything kind of switches to, or starts to switch to this very stylized look. Uh, you wouldn't see it into here. Right about here. Um, I just wanted the trigger on right now for other reasons. Um, yeah, and then we also have our little. They call it in, in uh, Halo the man cannon, or player launcher, or whatever you want to call it, jump pad, I guess. That's what I called it in the code, too, is jump pad. But yeah, let's show you guys how to make all these fun things. I really like the jump pad. Sometimes it does buck out a little bit, though, because it, I miss the uh, thing. But how am I? Okay, I'll say. I need to make the trigger a little bit bigger on top, is all. Alright, uh, so without further ado, let's get into how to make these crazy things. Alright, so load up whatever version I'm really want to use. I'm using 5.0.2. Should work for pretty much whatever else. Um, go to games. Select third person character. We don't really need starter content on, so I'm going to keep that ticked off. And then I'm just going to name this YouTube underscore the side scroller three all right let's get this set up I'm gonna delete that i'm going to select one of these guys go to select and do select all with the same material select all of those delete. delete get rid of these extra walls and yeah okay so one of the things that we're going to do i'm going to have the character move on the uh what is it x-axis right and the reason for that is because that is the forward axis, according to the character, and I just like having it on the forward axis. We could have it run on the right axis instead, which would make it go. Why? But I, I personal preference, don't like it. Would rather do the forward axis. Um, let me scale this in. And I'm gonna copy this guy. Wish it, just give us some end caps. Um, that I'll probably end up using for our wall jumping or sliding or whatever you want to call it video uh, which should be coming up soon and yeah that should be the level set up now the issue we have right now is if we hit play our character can go anywhere they want and our camera is directly behind them so fix that Go to content browser, third person, blueprints, and then open up the third person character. Inside of here, we can get rid of everything that says camera because we don't really need it. And like I said, we're going to be using the forward vector under this is in the movement input. We're going to be using our forward vector. So what we can do is get rid of the right vector. Let's delete that. We can copy paste our forward vector stuff and plug it in where that was. 
This will allow us to use W and S for moving forward and backwards, or alternatively, A and D. A lot of players prefer one or the other, over the other, even though it's the side scroller, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. You guys just do however you want to set it up. Uh, we'll leave our jump stuff, and that should be good. Now let's get the camera fixed. So one of the first things I want to do, I want to select the camera boom. I want to turn off do collision test. Uh, basically what that does is, let's say, um, we have maybe like a short wall between, or a pillar, let's say, yeah, we got a pillar between us, the camera, and the player. We want to have the player be able to run behind that. Um, if we left the hit test on, the camera would get pushed in as soon as anything gets between the player and the camera. And since I don't want that, and I'm going to turn that off. If you guys want, want to keep it like that, go for it. Um, that's totally up to you guys. So, again, with the camera boom selected, I want to and have it not move for some reason. Boom. Rotate. Negative 90. Why are you not moving, sir? Rotate the camera. What am I doing wrong here? First of all, we can also turn off the inherit pitch and yawn, all that good stuff. Is that why? Yeah, okay. I guess that's why. Um, <laughs> so yeah, turn off your inherit pitch, yawn, roll. Should be good to go at that point. And that's actually something we were going to have to do anyways. Um, yeah, so do collision test, turn off your pitch, yawn, roll inherits, and rotate your camera. I did slightly bump it by 10 degrees, if you guys want to follow along exactly, just because I like that little bit of a cant to it. And now, when we hit play, running, uh, I kind of want to make this a little bit further out, so arm, we're going to go 600. There we go. You guys put your arm length however you want it. And yeah, that's pretty much all the initial, initial setup. Uh, one issue I want to address that I ran into when I was making my game. Let's grab a sphere. What is that? 300? Okay. Let's set you to be 300, but we're also going to just then offset you slightly. Let's go like right about there. Let's get another one of you. If you guys can't tell what's going to happen here, um, Basically, the player's going to be running along, and they're going to hit this, and then it's going to push them around it. Now, we're going to be all the way out here. If, let's say that this was a pickup right here, nice floating coin or something that we sit in there spinning, and we want it, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, but now we're out here, so we would never touch that coin. But how do we fix that? Well, back over here. There we go. Let me show you guys just to show you. It will move around it, and now we're off course. So how do we fix that? Well, one, you can make sure that everything is always at your Y. So if I put that to 300 on the Y, so we can't move around it. But humans make mistakes. <laughs> so you can A, do that. Um, and just never misplace something incorrectly or B. Um, and also you can, you'd have other issues that might arise. Um, maybe something's just a little bit too round or whatever, and it'll throw you off. Doesn't matter where, how well you place it could easily do that. But just in case, you know, if you want to do it that way, you can. So what I'm going to do in, inside here, what I'm going to do as in here, we're going to do event in play. And what we're going to do is get the actor location. 
basically what we're doing is we're going to find out where the player is on the Y, because that's the uh, area that they're standing. You can tell by the green axis of the Y. So we don't ever want the player to be able to go left and right. We only want the player to be able to go forward and back, right? But we want the where they are in the left and right to always be the same, right? So what we can do, we get the actor location. We're going to promote the Y to its own variable, and I'm just going to call this the level Y POS for position. Not anything else, you big jerks. All right, and then that's all we need at the beginning play, but under event tick. I mean, you know what? I'm going to do a custom event for this. So I'm going to right click and type custom event, and I'm just going to call this reset player Y POS. Um, because in another video, we're going to be using the event tick. So I'm going to do a sequence here, and this is literally just to get set up for the next video as well. Um, we're going to do then do the reset layer Y. Let's run on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we're going to get the player or the actor location. We're going to get our Y position. And we're going to ask, is this not equal at the X and with the Y to our Y? And we can do a tolerance by doing nearly or equal, however you guys want to do it. But I'm just going to do this straight up not equal. Um, Plug that into a branch. The way I got that so quick was I just help B, left click. And then off of the true, if this is not equal to, if these two aren't equal to each other, then what we can do, I'm going to copy paste this. We're going to right click and say set actor location. Target is ourself because we're trying to set the character's location. We're going to right click on the new location and split the struct. And for the X and the Z, we're just going to plug those straight in. And then for our Y, we're going to grab our level Y position, plug that in. And the reason that we're doing it like that is basically in the beginning here, we're getting that position at the very start of the level. So that's where you have placed them prior to the level of ever even beginning, right? Uh, we can do this on construct as well, make it even better, but whatever, this this, this works. Um, anyways, then every tick, every frame, we're going to check, hey, are they off of that position? And if they are, then let's set them back to that position. So remember how before, let's make sure this is not the same, that's 310 and this is... 300 oh two sorry 270 and 300 yeah so they're not the same so now if i was to run into it you notice i didn't go around it i kind of just glanced over it instead but it kept us on that same exact path good that's what we're wanting yay so much nicer all right um one more thing that I'm gonna do, get rid of that first of all. But one more thing I wanna do, and this is just for style, something that I, I like. The camera is just a little too exact. It's just too perfect with me. I don't I don't like that. Um, so I'm gonna go back into a third person character and then I'm gonna go back to, is it in the camera boom? I can't remember. Yeah. I'm gonna select the camera boom. I'm gonna come down to the lag here. I'm gonna enable the camera lag. And this is what I normally do is I usually do about 3.5. Um, but we're actually, I'm going to go one. I want to show you guys what that does. So one is a little over exaggerated, but all right. So we're going to take off running and you'll notice we get to the color close to the edge of the screen and then the camera will slide into place. Just this kind of nice transition. Um, I like to do 3.5 and I'll show you guys why on that one. Where did I go? Camera, like yeah, there it is, 3.5. Actually, I think I usually do 3.25, but this will be close enough probably. 
then you see we kind of get a little bit of an edge it, it just makes it feel better I, I don't know how to explain it for me preference wise it just feels better um it's more of a movement thing like the it feels like it's trying to keep up with the player i don't know if you guys like that put it in there there's how to do it if you don't leave it out um but that's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we will show how to do the, um, at least the jump pad, I think is what we're calling it. Yeah, I can actually show they got that right here. I already had it ready. It's really bright. I need to fix the lighting in this level. Um, let me just jump on the jump pad. Yeah, we're good to go. And then, if we have time in that video, I'll go ahead and show you guys the wall climbing or jumping or something. And we also have the double jump, which you can't really see here. Here. Because the double jump, it's very slight because I want it. Because we kind of double jump here. I'll show you guys how to do that and how to make it stronger than that because I can understand when other people wanting that to be a lot stronger. It's just for this game's purposes, I want it to be that weak. Um, point, there we go. <laughs> but yeah, and I'll show you guys how we can do something like this. So if you wanted to make just a skyscraper climbing video game after this next video or two, you will have pretty much everything you need to know other than maybe the pickups and stuff, which we can get into. It's really, really simple. If you guys know how to do all this other stuff that we're doing, pickups won't be that much of a stretch for you at all. All right. So I will see you guys next time. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Join the Discord. Link is going to be in the description. And I will catch you guys next time.